So what was crucifixion like? Jesus was given the cross beam. Uh, historically, you were never given the full cross. The full cross was it would have been too heavy. I know artists and movies like to portray Jesus carrying a whole cross. That's just that's for drama. Okay, that's so that people can identify with the symbol, not just Jesus carrying a wooden beam. Even when I was a kid, I always thought the, co the cross was more of a dramatic statement than the wooden beam. Some people might think, oh, he's a carpenter, maybe he's going to build something. When it's a cross, there's no question. But historically, the posts were already in the ground. At the uh, outskirts of the city, if you're coming into a new city, or up on a hilltop. The point of doing that was that when visitors came into a town, they knew to behave. And the crimes were always listed at the cross, usually for the more serious criminals, so that you don't duplicate that crime. It, uh, crosses were clearly deterrents. Scripture says Jesus fell down multiple times. Well, obviously, if you're tied to the beam, it's hard to walk already. You're, it's already difficult to walk. And uh, furthermore, from all the scourging that happened earlier, you probably don't have much skin and you don't have much strength. Simon the Serene was drafted to carry Jesus' cross with him up to Calvary. The Synoptic Gospels record that. John leaves that story out. We'll talk about why John leaves that story out on a way future episode. Simon was required by law to carry Jesus' cross because Roman law said that you had to carry the gear of a soldier for one mile. Okay, so in this case, Simon had to carry the gear of Jesus, Jesus' wooden cross. If Simon would have refused, he probably would have been flogged. He probably would have spent some time in jail uh, for refusing a soldier's orders. So Simon didn't have much choice. When they got to Calvary, they laid Jesus down on the ground. Uh, has his, they have his hands tied to that wooden beam he just carried. They put a nail through your wrist, not your hand. Your hand bones aren't strong enough. If they put a nail through your hand bones, you could just slide right off. They put it in your wrist where you can't slide off. Furthermore, they would reinforce it with an extra board. So they kind of sandwich your wrist in between two wooden planks. So you can't just pull straight out. So they had this down to an art because crucifixions were so common in Roman occupied land. Uh, Jesus' crucifixion was nothing special to the Romans. It was probably like the fifth one that day. Sometimes they got creative and crucified people upside down or crucified people on X-shaped crosses. They would then, like with a pulley system, put that beam up and attach it to the post and then you could be up there for a couple of days. Your legs were often supported on an angle so that you could lift yourself up to breathe. Your legs were usually supported with like a, like a step stool so that you can lift your body up to breathe. This is why if they ever wanted to accelerate the deaths, they'd break the legs of the prisoners so that you can't lift yourself and you would suffocate. This is how we assume Jesus actually died. Jesus actually died in just a matter of hours, probably through suffocation. Some people would be up on that cross three to five days. You have open sores from the floggings. You have flies uh, chewing on your flesh. You have, you have uh, doggies, but not cute little doggies, more like coyotes or wolves coming to eat your toes and eat your feet away while you're on that cross. It's about 110 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in the middle of the day in Judea and crows would come out and eat your eyeballs because you can't fend them off. It's a horrific form of death and it was meant to be torturous, it was meant to be humiliating, it was always on the outskirts of the city because it was symbolic of the city rejecting you. And you would be naked. You'd be naked since the trial. Carrying your cross, on the cross, we don't show Jesus ever that way out of modesty, out of respect, but a humiliation was part of the game. Soldiers would stay at the foot of the cross and, and patrol because they didn't want family and friends taking the bodies down. They typically left the bodies up even after you died, which is an interesting factoid involving Jesus. Some scholars question whether or not Jesus historically was taken off the cross because the Romans typically left your body up there. But scriptures tell us that people like Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus pay for the tomb of Jesus. My personal opinion is they bribed the soldiers. Paying for the tomb of Jesus was, I'm going to give the soldiers some money. And the soldiers didn't care. This was, this was as common to them as, 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 as an employee at McDonald's serving french fries. There was nothing memorable about Jesus in the Romans' eyes. So if you have people offering you money, you're going to take it. And they'd be like, fine, take the body down. We don't really care. We probably won't even help you. You, you handle it. We'll walk away. And as a result, Jesus was taken off the cross.